Hello, everyone. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, so I recently did this poll. Um, so I'm actually recording this on the 21st uh, of June. So I'm probably going to upload this in a couple of days time. Um, but I did this poll yesterday, actually. Uh, about what content you guys would like me to produce over the summer so i said mass videos to help you get ready for a stem degree so i'm guessing a lot of you guys who have you know subscribed to the channel um have now finished your a level math so you, you've got your summer and you're obviously probably going to be starting uni in september and probably most of you are going to be doing stem degree so you know physics engineering maths economics finance computer science and all those kind of degrees so I put that option on the poll and currently, I mean, I've only got 70 votes, but still that's winning on the poll at the minute. Uh, we've got some year 12 students, so don't worry, year 12 students who subscribe. There will be some content for you. Definitely will be some, you know, some stuff coming for you uh, and general advice about university and starting A-level. So I've actually recorded a few videos kind of on that already. And I've got a few more planned as well that I'm going to do about, you know, my experience at university and, you know, how you can how you can best prepare to get ready for September. Um, but this video is going to be up uh, be about this first option here. So videos to get you ready for a STEM degree. So what I'm going to do this summer is I will be doing videos about maths that I think is going to be really useful in your degree. So if you are studying, for example, one of these degrees here, so maths, physics, engineering, chemistry, biology, economics, finance, computer science, I want to do some maths videos for you guys over the summer, which kind of go a little bit beyond the A-level math syllabus um, and kind of go a bit further into, well, further into stuff that you would have seen before, but also a couple of new topics as well, which will be in your degree subject. So the way that I've kind of set it up is that the videos will be on these topics here. So these are the topics I'm going to try and cover over the summer and try and get videos on. So I'm not going to go into, you know, lots and lots of really advanced detail because, you know, obviously that's what you'll be doing at university. And I've tried to come up with topics here, which I think all of you guys doing all of these degrees here will find useful um so now generally speaking if you've done if you're looking at doing a maths degree you probably will have done further maths so you know stuff like matrices and um di some differential equation stuff complex numbers which i've written down here um you know you would have seen that kind of stuff in in further maths already so you know you guys are kind of you know, you, you would have seen some of the content already that you'll be doing in your maths degree, basically. And only if you're doing physics as well, I'm sure a lot of you physics guys out there doing physics probably would have done further maths as well. So there will be a little bit of overlap with further maths, but also there'll be stuff that, you know, you wouldn't have seen in further maths. So I'll try and, you know, I'll try and deviate away from the, the further maths syllabus, but more specified you know, more specific for your degree. So I've tried to come up with basically a syllabus, which I think regardless of what STEM subject you'll be doing, all of this maths I think will be useful to you guys. And actually you'll see throughout your years at university, the maths in these videos that I'll be covering will come up somewhere along the line. So the first topic that I've, I've listed here is matrices. Now matrices, I think regardless of what STEM degree you do, I don't think you're going to avoid matrices. So maths, obviously, you can do matrices. Physics, you'll absolutely certainly be dealing with matrices in physics. Um, statistics, you, you'll be dealing with matrices when you're doing data analysis and, you know, hypothesis testing and that kind of stuff in statistics stuff um economics you know economics is basically applied statistics uh you'll be doing lots of matrices stuff um you know uh computer science you'll be dealing with matrices you know ev every single one of these topics chemistry maybe biology as well i'm gonna guess i mean mathematical biology you certainly deal with matrices and mathematical biology so if you're a math student a lot of universities offer mathematical biology as a module that you can study, certainly do a matrices in that. So basically what I'm trying to say is that matrices is very important if you're going to do a STEM subject to university. So I want to go through some matrices stuff um, and the stuff that I'm going to cover with matrices is going to be like how you add take away and multi uh, multiply matrices. Again, if you've done further maths, you will know this stuff already. So really, I'm not gearing these videos towards you guys who've done further maths already because you would have seen this kind of stuff before but there will be some you know different things especially in like multi-variable calculus um and probability distribution and further statistics even if you've done further maths you may not have seen before um now calculating determinants and inverses of matrices again that's quite an important topic you know for all of you guys i think solving simultaneous equations so you can use matrices to solve simultaneous equations as, as i'll try and show you in a future video and these things called eigenvectors and eigenvalues again you know if you're doing math physics engineering um 
you know, economics, I guess, as well. You know, all the, you know, these these things called eigenvectors, eigenvalues are very important things in matrices. But again, we'll go through that. Further calculus. So further calculus is just kind of adding on to what you already know, um, what you've already learned, uh, sorry, what you've already learned to A-level maths. So more chain rule practice. So chain rule is really big, especially if you're doing physics, maths, you know, chain rule, really heavy, lots and lots of chain rule stuff. So a little bit more chain rule practice I'm going to do in, in a video. Um, fundamental theorem of calculus. So again, especially if you're doing maths, physics, you know, especially those two degrees. Fundamental theorem of calculus is something that you'll see in your first year, maybe your first couple of weeks at university. And, you know, it's it's, uh, it's one of those things that take a little bit of practice to get used to. But I mean, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's fine. Integration by trig substitution. So again, if you've done further maths, you would have seen this before, integration by trig substitution. But um, if you've just done A-level maths, you wouldn't have seen this kind of thing before. You may have seen past papers where they actually get you to do this kind of stuff. So you may, you may have seen some past paper questions where they actually give you a trigonometric substitution to do. And they tell you to use this substitution to do this integral. But we're going to do this without having anyone tell us what substitution to do. So we're going to see how we would do that without an examiner writing on the exam page, use this substitution. You must use this substitution. So we're going to see how we can do that. Now, the next topic in the list, so we, we've got matrices further calculus, is something called multivariable calculus. So in math so far, what you've been dealing with is normal f of x functions. So we call these um, single variable functions. So we've got one variable x, and we've got an output f of x. So we're dealing with, you know, a graph like this. The x-axis are your inputs. The y-axis are your outputs. So when we talk about multivariable functions, we're now moving to basically 3D graphs. So we're now moving to, you know, graphs where we've got like an x-axis, a y-axis. And now we've got like some 3D kind of um, like shape, maybe some kind of like piece of paper like that and you've got like your z-axis now as well so i know i made a mess with this diagram but that's kind of the idea now so we're going to be looking at functions where instead of having one input you've now got two inputs so x and y um, and even three sometimes x y and z so th these are called multi-variable functions because now we've got mul uh, we've got lots of different independent variables and now you, you can also get these kind of things as well i may i probably may exclude this um i mean again if you're doing mass physics economics you know you will be doing this at some point these kind of vector multivariable functions where actually you get a vector of functions and you'll be doing calculus with a vector of functions uh which are not just you know single variable functions but multivariable functions so it can get you know quite um quite intense quite quickly these kind of multivariable calculus um ideas but basically we're just talking about functions where you've got more than one input so more than one letter in your function and also functions which can be vectors of functions as well so especially especially statistics you'll see a lot of this in statistics if you do a lot of um multivariate statistics for example um you'll see lots of matrices and vectors and uh, multivariable functions. So, you know, don't think all oh, statistics, I don't have to worry about, you know, my calculus and differentiation, because you certainly, certainly do, and especially matrices. Uh, partial differentiation. So, yeah, this is quite, this is something that I think you guys, you know, once I show you how to do it, or if you've already seen videos on it, it's quite simple. It's not anything, you know, hard. I know this word partial or partial differentiation, and this must be quite advanced, but it's actually not that bad i mean if you can do normal different if you can differentiate stuff like 3x squared i think you'll get a partial differentiation pretty fine and gradients and so gradients are multivariable functions so you know gradients in normal maths that you've seen before are just numbers like the gradient how steep a curve is right gradients with 3d curves like the this kind of like 3d thing that i've tried to draw in the corner over there uh gradients are now vectors so when you want to find the gradient of something the gradient is the vector now um so that's why things like vectors, matrices are actually really important in university STEM subjects. Um, so we're also going to do a little bit of double and triple integration as well. So, you know, you would have done integration where you integrate things like, you know, 3x squared. Well, now what we're going to do is instead of integrating 3x squared with respect to x, we might now want to put like a, let's just put like a little y in there. And then we're going to put a dy there. And then we're going to put another integral symbol there. And we're going to be integrating that kind of stuff. Um, and we may have like some limit sets of 0 to 1 and 2 to 3. So we're going to be integrating things like that. That's called double integration. And also you've got triple integration as well we may have like a dz there and another integral symbol so we'll be doing a bit of that as well 
Um, using polar and cylindrical coordinates. So actually, mm, I, I may not include this. I mean, I'm not too sure. I put a little star by that. I may not go through that. But I mean, especially if you're doing physics, maths, you know, you will be using lots and lots of polar and cylindrical coordinates. Maybe not in economics, maybe not, you know, finance, maybe not. Um, I mean, you know, if, you, if you're doing like a master's and PhD in economics, finance, you may be using that, that these kind of techniques, polar cylindrical coordinates. But in a normal bachelor's degree, Maybe not. I don't know, to be honest, but I mean, definitely mass physics, engineering, you'll be definitely doing lots of polar and cylindrical coordinates, uh, chemistry, biology, probably not probably not um so i may not include this but if you are doing maths and physics you will be doing these things called cylindrical and polar coordinates so i mean obviously what i've drawn up here is a diagram using what we call cartesian coordinates so x and y coordinates and we use like you know coordinates like you know three two minus one to describe where we are on the coordinate axes but instead, you've got different coordinate systems which describe where you are on these axes without doing, you know, base width and height. So you could have. So, for example, with polar coordinates, right, you could your you can have um, th these are coordinates which describe where you are based on how far away you are from the origin. So the radius you are from the origin and also the angle uh, you are on the plane. Um, and in 3D, you call it cylindrical coordinates. So you call so you've got uh, a radius you are away from the origin, an angle um, you are relative to the x-axis away from the x-axis, and also a height, so a z value. Um, and um, uh, you've also got uh, sorry, did I say I wrote down polar and cylindrical coordinates here? But I meant to, what I meant to say also was spherical coordinates. So you've also got spherical coordinates as well, which is more like 3D coordinates. So spherical coordinates again i probably you know, I, i've got a feeling that i'm not going to have time to go through this and again i don't think every single one of you in your degrees are going to be using polar and cylindrical coordinates so i don't think i may i may not go for it we'll see we'll see uh the next topic differential equations so you know, if we go back to our list this is now our fourth kind of chapter so differential equations. So you've obviously done some A level maths. So we'll do a little reminder of the, that kind of thing at A level maths, and then we're going to look at solving linear ODs by integrating by the by what we call an integrating factor. So if you again, if you've done further maths, you'd have actually seen this before. Um, uh, but yeah, what we call we call um. So you're going to obviously, you know, what I'm trying to say is you've done differential equations before, but you, you'll now see what we mean by linear ODE. So ODE, this term ODE just means ordinary differential equation. Um, you've got things called ordinary differential equations and you've also got things called partial differential equations, which kind of involve um, what I was talking about back here, uh, partial derivatives. So, again, when we do partial differentiation you'll see what a partial derivative is. So you've got two types of differential equation, and I'm not going to go through partial differential equations because that really is university, you know, definitely university material, and I don't want to go into that. Um, but ODs, you know, you, you've seen ODs in A-level maths. You've seen basic ODs in A-level maths. So we call those differential equations ODs. So an ordinary differential equation is an equation where you just have something like, you know, dy by dx involved. Um, or you may have like a d squared y by dx squared involved. So we call this one a second order ODE. So when you've got differential equations with this d squared over dx squared involved, we call that a second order differential equation. But when you just got like a dy by dx in your equation, we call that a first order. So we're going to look at solving linear first order. So really, I should put here first order equations. We're going to look at solving li linear first order equations. And the method is called the integrating factor method. And then we're going to solve some basic second order differential equations. So the most famous one is probably an equation that you've already seen before, f equals ma. So that is a second order OD. So you may be looking at this and thinking, uh, there's no derivatives in f equals ma like force equals mass times acceleration there's just there's no dy by dx in that there's no diff derivatives like what how is that how is that a differential equation well actually remember so do you remember that your acceleration is the derivative of velocity isn't it and remember that velocity is the derivative of displacement so really acceleration is d2 x squared so x is your displacement we normally in, in university we call x displacement um, rather than s so d squared x by dt squared is equal to a so force is actually equal to mass times d squared x 
by dt squared. And now this is a differential equation, a second order differential equation. So we'll actually solve this equation there and go through how you would solve that. So especially you know, if you're doing maths and physics, engineering, you know, that's a very important one to know. Um, but even if you're doing like economics, finance, stats, you know, you will have differential equations. I promise you, you will. So, you know, this is all useful stuff for you guys as well. The next topic, probability distribution. So again, unless you're, well, unless you're doing computer science, I'd say, you're not going to avoid probability distribution. So mass physics, you you know, you'll be looking at probability distribution in physics. I promise you, I really do. Um, statistics, obviously, economics, you can't really avoid it. So we'll be doing a bit of a reminder of discrete random variables. So how you calculate the mean and variance of a discrete random variable. Uh, we'll be looking at some new distributions. Obviously, you've seen binomial. So you know, you guys will be good with your binomial distribution now. Um, but we'll look at a new distribution called a Poisson distribution. Uh, if, again, if you've done further maths, you'd have actually seen this before. Um, we'll look at something called a geometric distribution. So some again, some of the past paper exam questions that you may have done actually may have involved this geometric distribution. So you may remember in some past paper questions, you may have got a question which asks you to, you know, uh, calculate the probability that you first achieve success or you know i remember seeing a question i think it was in edxl and it was um you know calculate the probability that you first hit the dartboard or you first hit the target after five goes at throwing the dart so we call that a geometric distribution we call that kind of thing you know the number of times you have to play a game until you finally get a success we call that a geometric distribution so we'll be doing some calculations with that um, and then we'll be looking at continuous random variables so you know for example normal distribution so distributions that measure time uh, heights um, you know continuous data temperatures that kind of thing we look at we'll, we'll look at how we calculate the mean and variance a median as well for continuous distributions We'll be doing some more normal distribution stuff. So we'll be doing a little bit more detail about the normal distribution, the actual function that a normal distribution is, what that looks like. Um, also, you know, you would have done, obviously, in hypothesis testing for your A-level maths, you would have looked at, um, you know, when, when we do our hypothesis test, remember that we actually don't have the same variance as one distribution for a um, for a normal distribution so remember um, if you watch any of my videos I called this x bar and then you had your mean and then you had to divide your variance by n so remember when you did your hypothesis test in stats you had to divide your variance by n so I'm going to go through why you actually do that so why that where that actually comes from in the first place so that's what we're going to do in this further normal distribution like section you know really go into a bit more detail about you know how the normal distribution works and why you get results like this here um, when you do your hypothesis tests. And then the final kind of distribution we're going to look at is the exponential distribution, um, which is, again, another continuous random variable. It's another continuous distribution with continuous numbers. Um, there are other distributions. So you'll see, especially if you do like maths and stats at uni, maybe physics as well, you'll probably see a beta distribution. You'll see gamma distributions. Um, You'll probably see a Pareto distribution, especially if you do like economics. You, you'll probably see that one. So there are other distributions as well. But I think these ones here are kind of like the, the general, you know, Poisson, geometric, exponential. Those are the three new ones that always come up. So we'll definitely go through those. That's probability distributions and also some further statistics as well. So, again, if you're doing maths, you're not going to really. Well, it depends on your university. Some universities actually don't do any maths in your first year. So. You may be lucky, depending on which university course you choose. If, you, if you're doing a maths degree, you may avoid some statistics. But I think most universities in your first year, you kind of are forced to do a bit of statistics. Uh, physics as well, you probably don't have to do any statistics in your first year. But maybe in your second and third year, you may choose some courses where you've got to do a bit of statistics. Again, economics, you know, economics, as I said, is kind of applied statistics. You're not going to you're not going to avoid any statistics because most of your economics degree will be statistics. So um, a really, you know, quite an important thing, statistics, if, you could, if you're doing a STEM subject. And of course, biology, chemistry as well. I'm sure you'll be doing hypothesis tests in biology. So again, you can't really avoid it if you're doing a STEM subject. So we're going to be looking at how you calculate confidence intervals. So, you know, we did these normal distribution hypothesis tests in A-level in, in a maths. So we're going to be looking at how you can come up with a confidence interval. Um, and kind of by, you know, by looking at the word, you know, the words confidence interval, um, confidence interval basically tells us how confident we are um, that when we collect some data, 
um we get data within a certain interval i mean I, I probably didn't make any sense but when we go through it hopefully it will make sense what a confidence interval is so confidence intervals you see those all the time at university uh when you do stats at university you'll see confidence intervals you know so, you know come up with a 95 percent confidence interval um again you'll see kind of what this means um a chi-squared hypothesis test i'm not going to go into real detail with these chi uh, chi-squared hypothesis tests because the theory is very very hard i remember doing this in my uh, in my final year at university um and i can't remember how the proofs all go there's a lot of long proofs in like where this all comes from but i'm going to go through the basics of how you do a chi-squared hypothesis test so um <laughs> a lot of people call this word chi or chai is in like chai la say uh, but you say chi is it's like a it's like a greek letter i think chi so a chi-squared hypothesis test um which is basically a hypothesis test where you test whether two things are independent from each other so let's say uh you're you're doing an experiment and you're going to collect data and find out whether the number of hours of revision that you do is independent of your exam mark so you could do what's called a chi-squared hypothesis test where you collect your data and then you say okay right so there is sufficient evidence to suggest that actually those two things depend on each other so the hours of revision that you do depends on or the exam mark you get depends on the hours of revision that you do so it's kind of that kind of thing testing whether two things are independent that's kind of what that's about and then finally this least squares regression line so you would have done this thing you know you'd have done correlation coefficients uh, sorry co co correlation coefficients you would have done that in your um in your a level maths but we'll be looking at how we can actually calculate the equation of a line of best fit basically so if you've got some data like this um you know, if you get a line of best fit, how do you calculate the equation of this line of best fit? How do you actually come up with the perfect line of best fit? And what is the equation? What is like the y equals mx plus c equation for this line of best fit? We'll be doing a bit of that as well. Um, and I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll go through that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go through again, like the real advanced details of that because again with this kind of stuff you'll be doing hypothesis testing with this kind of stuff where you'll be hypothesis testing things like the gradient and the y-intercept um, of your data um, but we won't go into that because again well firstly one i can't remember it anyway <laughs> and two um you know it, it, you'll be doing that more in more detail at university i just want to give you a flavor for the maths that you may be doing at university and then if we do have time complex numbers so again if you're doing an economics degree or a statistics finance degree um computer science maybe is, do we do complex numbers in computer science uh probably not i don't know to be honest i didn't do computer science but um you know if you're doing mass physics engineering you're not you will absolutely certainly 100 percent million percent be doing complex numbers a lot um but if you are doing other stem subjects biology again if you do mathematical biology you'll be doing complex numbers i promise you that but if you're doing like a proper biology degree you know probably not see you probably won't be seeing complex numbers um but anyway if, if we do have time we'll be looking at how we solve equations involving complex numbers so remember in a level maths you know when you solve equations sometimes you get no real roots well actually you get two complex roots in that case so we'll be solving equations where we find out complex roots of equations uh we'll be looking at this thing called the complex plane so we have like a again if you've done further maths you'll know this stuff already um you have like an axis of real numbers here and then you have like an axis of imaginary numbers here and then you can like plot co uh, complex numbers and you can calculate like the size of a complex number like the modulus of a complex number you can calculate like the angle that the complex number makes with this real axis and this kind of links into the last two points so complex numbers in exponential form how you write complex number sorry complex numbers in this kind of exponential form and also de Marv's fear uh sorry de Mar de <laughs> let me try and get my french pronunciation right de Marv's theorem um which is a very famous theorem in complex numbers but again i don't know if i'm going to have time to do this and not all of you guys will be doing complex numbers in your degrees um but certainly maths and physics students will be um but if you have done further maths already then you won't need to watch my videos anyway because it's just going to be stuff that you already know um so yeah that's kind of um yeah, a summary of what I'm planning to cover this summer. So I'm going to try and get through as much of these topics as I can this summer. Um, so definitely matrices, some further calculus stuff, a bit of multivariable calculus, so partial derivatives, um, you know, gradients of uh, 2D and 3D functions, some differential equation stuff, some probability distributions, and a little bit of statistics at the end as well. 
So thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully this kind of gives you a flavour of what I'm planning to do this summer. Hopefully <laughs> I've got enough time to make all the content that I want to. It's kind of a bit of a, an ambitious objective because I am planning to be away uh, in, in late August. So we'll see if I can get all this syllabus done. But that's what I'm planning to do. So just give you a flavour of the maths that you'll be doing if you are going to be doing a STEM subject at university. And, you know, being aware of these kind of topics before you go into university really does make things easier because it just means you've got a little bit of less thinking, a little bit less work to do. So all these things won't be new things to you. These would be things that actually you've seen before and you'll feel quite confident with. So you don't want to go into university which will be the case with some topics you do, you know, going into university, seeing these new topics and feeling like, oh, no, this is this is hard. I've got a lot of work to do here. So seeing some of these maths topics before you have to deal with this, you know, just just kind of lightens things up a little bit and just um, gives you a little bit more confidence. So, again, hopefully, yeah, you know, this video kind of gives you a, a little bit of a flavor of what you could be doing in maths and as i said we'll try and go through as many of these topics as much as possible not in huge detail but we'll be going through you know the basics of what you know what kind of maths comes up in these topics and the kind of maths that you'll be seeing at university